Pokemon Go trainers. Welcome to episode 169. Nice. I'm lured up. <laughs> the podcast where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Lured up as part of the Pokemon Professor Network, and today is Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021, and I'm your host, Ken Pescatore, joined by my co-host, Adam Tuttle. Yo, Adam, what is up? How are you? Yo, Ken. Yo. Not Yo. much. What's going on? Not much. Just we had an amazing Zoom call, as per usual, before the show. Yeah. Want to thank yeah. everybody for coming and hanging out with us. Yo, it's patron, greatly appreciated. The, the, the patron Zoom is popping off. It it's, is popping. It's What's always, uh, It's so fun, man, because it's like it's a combination of like people sitting at their desktop and then also people that are like on foot walking around and, you know, with their cameras on and everything. It's just it's a it's a good time. And, you know, Adam opens 300 packs of TCG cards and uh, that's not yeah. intentional, but it's like I want to get something good and I want to make it exciting. It, it's so bad. It's the, everyone's a bad influence on each other. It's like, oh, they have all these oh, cards. Spend, and like, I'm not going to open shit. Get poker <laughs> coins. Spend Stardust. <laughs> open packs of cards. Open more ah, packs of cards. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. But we are in March. We do have a lot of stuff to cover today. And we will recap the last week of gameplay, including the Giovanni special research. Adam, I'm interested to know how far you got. Don't say anything yet. Wait, because, what, what Giovanni special research? Oh, yep, yep. And uh, we're currently playing without an active event, and I want to talk about the spawn pool and how awesome it is right now. And we do have complete details for the Searching for Legends event. This is the one with Shiny Nose Pass. We touched on it a little bit last week. Pokemon Go and the trading card game will be colliding for the first time ever. We don't know much, but we will spill the beans on the details that we do know. And... Uh, the Pokemon Go Tour a bonus event has been announced, and the community got so pissed <laughs> that we're going to do a Poke the Bear. So, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, they we'll got start mad with... that we're doing a Poke the Bear? No, they got so mad that we're going to do a Poke, poke the Bear about their madness. Their sadness? It's their madness and sadness. Anyway... Let's talk about the higher they fly. This was the Giovanni special research. Adam, did you, did you, where are you with this? Before we even get into it, where this is the, the new Giovanni special research. Adam, where are you in the in the research? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where I am just in general. Have you done am a I single down, rocket battle? Up? Have you done a rocket battle this uh, week? It says I'm two out of six. Oh no! <laughs> I'm 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 still needing to catch five shadow Pokemon. I'm at two out of five. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, it, it's been an but I interesting. Swear, look. I've I've caught or done several balloons. Like this doesn't make sense. Uh, well, it could have been leaders. Maybe you did a leader, and that's why. Ah, it was jeez, stupid Arlo. You'll turn the freaking thing off. Anyway, uh, it's been an interesting week since we last recorded, as uh, we kind of had the end of the season of celebration and the beginning of the season of legends. So that was kind of cool that we kind of had that that both you know both seasons in the past week. And I think it's really nice that we currently have, you know, this season's vanilla, like we, we've been calling it, the vanilla spawns, which uh, seem to be like the best ever. And you can feel like the biome based stuff that they mentioned. Uh, we're seeing a shit ton of evolved Pokemon in the wild, which is great. I just caught a Typhlosion. Yeah, like this is really cool, man. It's, it's awesome. But I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. I want to back up and, and just stick to this Giovanni special research, the higher they fly. Now, the tasks in this uh, were pretty straightforward, and they had some like little things here and there, but ultimately you, had to, you have to do 13 Team Go Rocket grunts before battling the three leaders, Arlo, Cliff, and Sierra, defeating the leaders, then rewarded you with the Super Rocket Radar. The Super Rocket Radar, uh, which you're, if you're anything like me, will help you find like 50 fucking decoys before finding Giovanni, because that's what happens to me every freaking time. But, uh, you know, I literally had, uh, I think it was nine decoys this this last time, which was a total pain in the ass. Um, I don't even fucking battle them. I just fucking run. But depending on when you completed the research and ultimately defeated Giovanni, that would determine which legendary bird he had. Uh, with March being Articuno, April being Zapdos, and May being Moltres. Now, I got my Articuno in February. The last day of February was the actual beginning of this research. So it was kind of weird that the blog had said, like, March, April, May, 
But there was the possibility if you'd got your shit together and did everything in one day like I did, you could do it on the 28th, which is what I did. Just same shit. Just Art Kuno. Nothing special. Um, we also have uh, Incarnate Form, Landorus, and Five Star Raids. So we had our raid hour today uh, for that. Yesterday was Krabby Spotlight Hour with two times transfer candy. Uh, Adam, what, what did you think of this week? What do you think of kind of the, the special research and the process of playing through the whole thing just to get another Shadow Legendary Bird? It doesn't entice me to keep, like, trying as far as the, the Giovanni's thing goes. Um, I am stuck, like I said, on battling more Shadow Pokemon. But but that's the beauty of special research, right? No expiration. Like you could just yeah 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 no do I it mean over time it's cool it is what it is you know I'm not too worried about finishing it not like the Kanto tour so <sighs> take a deep breath Adam but as far as like the spawns holy guacamole these are flipping awesome all right yeah well let's let's get to that in in, in a second okay 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 are you gonna try to get any of the le- any specific legendary bird or are you just gonna finish when you finish um. Hold on, let me look at my thing. Shadow and well, legendary. Well, you you should have two of everything already. Uh, yeah, I do. So, <laughs> what what would I need? What would I care I know. about? I don't know. Uh, That's I don't care about anything. So it just when I when I when I complete it, I complete it. I'm not so in pretty, a rush. Well, hopefully you'll be able to do thirteen Team Go Rocket grunts in the next uh, three months. <laughs> I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. Uh, but what about uh, Landorus Radar? Did you do any? You didn't. Didn't we do a couple together? I don't know. No, uh, maybe we did one together with Josh from Special Conditions. Yeah. Oh, I got the shiny. Yeah, you got the shiny. Like but, it's like a ninety-six. But during the actual raid hour on my way home, I uh, I did get invited to some raids, and I did end up with the shiny. Oh, nice. All right. So we Adam's both got doing, the shiny today. Adam's doing some raids. Yeah. What about Krabby Spotlight Hour? Anything? I did play. Um, I, nice. Okay, I did forget because I was in the middle of like organizing cards. But I nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I was 15 minutes late to the party, but there was crabs everywhere. Yeah, the spawns were pretty heavy. It was pretty good. It was pretty awesome. Yeah. So so it's like I just I kept catching and then catching and catching and catching. I was really excited for this one because I didn't have the shiny. And I still don't have the shiny, so oh, I was not excited by the F. end of it. Wow. Hey, man. F in R- the podcast. F? R- wherever you're listening to this, F in the air. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just give, them, give, give the next person you see the middle finger. <laughs> F you. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let, let's let's talk about these spawns a little bit. Let's let's shift over to the season of legends because uh, I'm really enjoying this, and, and it sounds like you are too, but... When we reviewed March's event layout last episode, I did mention that this week, actually a little bit more than a week, first like eight, nine days of the month, we're not going to have an active event, which does give us a small break from the action. However, we have these biome-based heat map shit going on with the, the spawns. We have our base Season of Legends seasonal spawns and an absolute increase in the number of evolved Pokemon in the wild. We're getting reports of evolved shiny Pokemon in the wild. Uh, RK9, uh, who else did we see? Someone someone else just mentioned something on the Discord call that there was another uh, shiny Typhlosion maybe someone saw. I don't know what it was. It was an RK9. Arcanine. No, but there was, yeah, but there was another one that we were talking about. I don't know. But shiny or evolved forms of Pokemon all over the place. I just had Ludicolo in the house, which was fucking cool. So Ludicolo. It, it's it's the no, honestly the <laughs> the, the spawns have been have been absolutely awesome. So even though we don't have an event, it almost feels like it because the, the spawns are that good. And it's like it's crazy how the shift in spawn pool makes psychologically fucks with you. Because like you see a Rattata or a Wurmple and you're genuinely excited. Not because you want like the best Wurmple ever, but because you haven't seen one in three months, so it makes it exciting. Like it's a brilliant concept. It really plays to your, you know, just your feelings of seeing these Pokemon every so often, and then you're like, when you do see them, the mundane Pokemon is like, oh shit, a rat. It's like, you know, you would never be excited for a rat if it was around every day, all day. 
You know what I mean? This is this is very true because I've seen Rattatas recently. I even seen them Raticate like a bunch. Yeah, me too. Actually, yeah. And it's like if that was shiny, that'd be sick. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the Canto stuff specifically will be interesting to follow because you know, with obviously all the Canto stuff going live in the Canto tour. Does that mean we'll see evolved versions of everything, even like second evolutions shiny? That would be fucking cool, man. That would be I cool. I hope so. It like I've never been excited to see a knit arena, but I'm like, whoa! If this knit arena could be a shiny, like that's hype. Yeah, that, that, that is straight kind of fire. We also talked about incarnate form Landorus being in raids. We did have the raid day today, and honestly, the raids have been pretty fucking jumping for Landorus because of the shiny, of course, but also for PvP. Uh, we did mention the egg pools last week and how they kind of gave us like one or two examples of each egg tier. And we were like, what the fuck? They used to give us the full list. So now we have uh, the full list. Actually, we don't. We have the mo- most of the list. So I'll run through these really quickly. So the egg pools reflect the current seasonal spawns. So that in general, all of the eggs will reflect that. But uh, 2Ks, the, 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 the kind of... Stand out for me is Dunsparce. In 5Ks, we got Clam Pearl. And while Axu is still in 10Ks, so is Esper. So it's like, it's not a terribly exciting lineup, but maybe there's something in there. Volbeat and Illumise are in there. Like, I, I don't know. Whatever you Those are nice. It. Those are nice. We also mentioned the Hemispherical Pokemon uh, would be expanded. And we now have a bigger list than we did last time. The Northern Hemisphere will have Fungus, Tangela, Miltank, Shuppet, Finneon, Ducklet, Carablast, Ponita, Lotad, Patrat, and of course, Niantic's favorite Pokemon, and more. That's a great Pokemon, right? The and more Pokemon? I love when they do that, when they put that at the end of lists. The Southern Hemisphere will see Paris, Yanma, Stantler, Drifloon, Remoraid, Buizel, Shelmet, Vulpix, Seedot, Zigzagoon, and more. Just fucking tell us. But wait, there's more. Anyway, Adam, what do you think of this? Um, you know, this. I mean, obviously the spawns are fucking awesome. The raids don't necessarily... The raids and, and eggs, it's like it is what it is. I, I really think that the, the base seasonal spawns that we're seeing right now are absolutely fucking phenomenal. Yeah. I think, you know, getting all these Pokemon and eggs, like, Clamperl's super exciting. You know, and yeah, like that's a good one. Now seeing like, I mean, it's I know it's in the southern hemisphere, but like seeing Paris in the in an egg, like knowing that that could be hatched and shiny. That that's, that's a uh, that's a that's a big that's, that's a, a southern hemisphere excitement. spawn. Paris. Oh, it's a spawn. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, like that's you know, I'm I'm bummed. Like out of the southern hemisphere ones, it's like shit. I wish we had Paris, but we get Miltank. You know what I mean? We get Tangela. Those are other good shinies too, you know. Oh, I know. I, I like honestly. I feel like I get a lot of shiny tanglas. I'm tangled up in the shiny tanglas. Oh no! But what do you think of like the the pace of the game right now? You know, there's no active event. Like, does it feel good for you just having the the spotlights and the raid hour? Like, does it feel kind of yeah? Mellow? It feels calm down. Okay. Okay. And don't forget, tomorrow we also have our first uh, Thursday event with the with the balloons increased frequency of of team go rocket balloons so we don't have this overarching event going on this week but we do have like all these little you know spot spotlight raid hour bonus event kind of things uh to keep us busy which is cool um but yeah i i think i i think i only have one shiny tangela so man i wish there was long distance trading Fuck. Yeah, I would totally trade you one. I know you would. I know you would. No, but honestly, the, these spawns are 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 awesome. I I love seeing the evolved forms, and it would be nice if the quality of life updates that they mentioned last week in the blog about uh, XL candy being reworked. Out of all the stuff in the blog, that was delayed, and I didn't say like evolved forms would have higher chances of getting candy. Like we're seeing all these evolved forms. It's like I want my fucking XL candy. <laughs> yes, yes. Shit. As do I. Yeah. All right, let's uh let's keep it moving. We're moving at a at a good clip here. Uh searching for legends. This is the next uh event, the actual first well, we do have Fletchling Community Day this Saturday, but our first multi-day event will be searching for legends. 
Uh, this event is going to run from Tuesday, March 9th at 10 a.m. to Sunday, March 14th at 8 a.m. Now, 8 a.m. stop time is kind of funky, but that Monday we have the raid hour, like the bonus raid hour that they haven't announced too. And then on Tuesday, that's the start of the charge up event, which is the electric type event. But let's get back to searching for legends. So the blog copy reads like this. We're kicking off season of legends with a search for legendary Pokemon. Any successful search requires a good sense of direction. And if there's one Pokemon equipped to help in that regard, it's nose pass. The compass Pokemon will be appearing in greater numbers to help you sniff out leads alongside a variety of ground, rock, and steel type Pokemon. His shiny is beautiful. Yo, it's a good shiny. It's a weird tone, right? It's like a weird It's color. like a mustard yellow. Yeah, it's very unique looking. It'll definitely punch and, and stand out when you, know, when you see it on screen. Uh, this starts the 9th, ends the 14th, like I said. Uh, the following Pokemon will be appearing more often in the wild. I hate fucking reading lists. Diglett, Geodude, Magnemite, Nosepass, Aaron, Baltoy, Rocket Roller, Drillbur, and more. Uh, and if you're lucky, you might find the shiny Nosepass. Okay, we know that. The following Pokemon will be attracted to Incense. Now, this is an important one because the game behaves behaves differently now with Incense. If you don't have an Incense on during one of these events, the in, the event like looks like shit for you. Yeah. You, you know, so it's very important to go into these events with Incense. So if you're free to play, you know, you, you really should be banking your fucking coins to get to 250 so you could buy a set of you know eight incense like it's crucial you know to these events so when you have these like long stretched out events where you could be playing over a couple of days you got to think about it you know you might need two three incense a day so it's like you know you're, you're going to want to prepare for that so just keep that in mind uh but yeah tr attracted to incense a lowland diglet a lowland geodude magnemite nose pass there so there's nose pass i Aaron, want the alone geodude Yo, Lolan Geodude I need. I need Rog and Rolla still. That's on this list. So th there's some decent spawns here. Uh, the following Pokemon will be hatching from eggs, Ma 5K eggs, Magnemite, Nosepass, Aaron, Boltoy, Beldum, and Drillbur. And in one-star raids, we'll have Alolan Diglett, Nosepass, Rog and Rolla, Drillbur, Ferro Seed, and Clink. All right, what else do we have here? Uh, the following Pokemon will be appearing in three-star raids, Alolan Graveler, Magneton, Skarmory, and Matang. I think that's the first time Matang will be in raids. So if you're working on like the, you know, unique raid metal, this is uh, this is a good opportunity to do some shit that you maybe haven't done before. That's the way I'm looking at it. It's like these Pokemon might not be too exciting, but I'll do them one each. You know, I don't think I've ever done a ball toy raid. You know, I've done clay at all. I don't think I've done ball toy. Like I need those unique raids for that metal. So that's where I'll be. Uh, complete event exclusive re uh, field research tasks and timed research to encounter Pokemon like nose pass. All right. So in addition to the spawns, we will have timed research. That's exciting. I love timed research. Adam, what do you think of this event? What do you think of shiny nose pass? Like, is this event all about shiny nose pass or do you care? It about is some other all stuff? about shiny nose pass. Kind of right. They're kind of <laughs> just like, Oh, there's some other desirable Pokemon, but they want you to sniff out, you know, the stuff. They want you, you know, to it's, sniff out. But it's like sniff out the legendaries. It's like there's no mention of fucking legendaries here. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like you're going to have – is, is Landorus still in raids during this? You know what I mean? It's like, come on. <laughs> it's like what are we talking about here? Sniff out legendaries. But, no, I mean, Beldum, you know, in in for in, from, from Incense, Rog and Rolla from Incense, I like that. You know, Laron, like these are these are decent spawns. So um, I'm kind of into it. But – um. You know, I, I don't know if I'm going to be hatching, like, using super incubators here. You know what I mean? 5K eggs. I hate when they're 5Ks. It's, like, too small an egg to use a super incubator, too long an egg to want to use, like, you know, a non, like, a regular incubator. It's like, fuck, I just used my, my freebie. But <laughs> I, are you going to, like, would you put these eggs in super incubators during this event? Are you going to hatch or no? Uh, Possibly not. You know, that, that that's actually a good point. There's no bonus here. So sometimes, like, these overarching events will have some additional bonus on top of the spawns, like, you know, additional XP or uh, half-hatch distance or some shit like that. There is no bonus here in this event. So it's what you see is what you get 
with the spawns, the eggs, the raids, and the research, but tis what it is. Does that matter to you? Like, does, does that bug you that there's no kind of, like, you know, bonus to, to, to resources? No. No? That's, that's never really bothered me. No. Well, fuck it then. It's just, it's just an added bonus. Well, that's why it's a, <laughs> that's why they label it as a fucking bonus. I know, but it's like, I don't need, like, need it to play the game. Uh, Other people need it to play the game. <laughs> They're being punished if they don't get it. So Yes. All right. Well, uh Adam, I got one more topic to cover before we take a break. We are we are moving at a at a brisk pace today. Last week we had like a fucking hour and 20 minute long show. I think we're going to be well under an hour today. It's interesting. We're we're moving. We're moving right along, man, but I know you're going to be excited about this one. This is groundbreaking news. I'm very excited to talk about this. Professor Willow will be coming to the Pokemon TCG. This is big time. This is really, really big time. Am I allowed to share the thing that I, like, made up real quick? (laughs) (laughs) Hold on. So to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Pokemon and the 5th anniversary of Pokemon Go, Professor Willow will be making an appearance in the TCG later this summer. Now, Niantic hasn't shared the details of how to get the cards, but they do mention that they will be available in all regions where Pokemon cards are sold. Uh, They're going to be announcing details of the card, the art, the text in late May, as well as the details on how to get them. Now, Adam, I don't think anyone on Earth kind of understands the TCG market and retail better than you. So could this card kind of be like a market bomb waiting to explode? Like, are people going to go fucking ballistic for this? Like, how do you think we're going to be able to get this thing? Honestly, I have no idea. And if you gave me, if, if, if you had asked me this like months ago, I probably would have been like, oh yeah, they could throw it in as like a, as like a promo and some sort of like, I don't know, bundle of something. I don't know. You could, it, it honestly would be really cool if they did like an in-game purchase or if like you made a, an in-game purchase purchase of like four four ninety nine or more or something like that you just fill out something and it like they send it to you oh and they mail it to you that would could be, that, could really that be cool. like the, the grand scheme to capture our our mailing addresses <laughs> they already <laughs> know where shit. we live <laughs> yeah i guess you're right <laughs> check check google maps they already know so i was thinking about it and i was like well maybe they could do this like the previous distributions they've done at like Toys R Us stores or Target or GameStop. It's not oh, like a partnership with GameStop. That sounds perfect. Well, they did the thing with the Pokestops. You know what I mean? So there's there's GameStop Pokestops right now. So uh, who knows? But maybe they do it like that, a physical distribution at a retailer, at a store. The other thing is maybe it's just going to be part of a set, like part of like an actual numbered card in a set. Like if that's the case, oh, then... could it be an anniversary, an, an actual genuine anniversary set towards the end of the year? Yeah, I like, could see that happening. Like I, you know, I'd imagine, you know, Japan is usually a month ahead of us with TCG, so we'll probably see this card hit J- Japan first. There's a good chance that this could just be part of a, a, an upcoming set. You know what I mean? Like. This may not be a promo. This may not be a distribution. This may not be a standalone thing. This could just be another trainer card in in the next set or a couple sets out. Who knows? I I think this is really exciting, though. But we'll see. See, the beauty of the TCG right now is that um, in the in the card game, they've allowed for all the professors to get their own version, like a printed card. But they're all they're all called professor's research right the text is still the same but like the small text says like you know it would say professor willow professor magnolia professor juniper like those are all like yeah they're they're different names but they're still technically that one name so you can only use one copy you can't like have four different professors you have to have the same one right it has to be the, the same four 
But I see that I, like that's what I mean. Can, yeah. Maybe it's just a reprint of Professor's research in in in, in an and they just set. throw Professor Willow in. <laughs> yeah, why not? Which right? makes sense. Which makes sense. Honestly, like if I was Pokemon, that's exactly what I would do. And that's exactly what I I did up a little picture real quick. It was like, hey, Ken, this is what it should look like. <laughs> and, no, and it's awesome. You put the little 25th anniversary, you know, Pikachu silhouette on it. I was like, oh, shit. But the, the thing is, the thing that's interesting is this is part of a multifaceted collaboration and promotion. So they're saying this is just the first leg of this collaboration. So with they that better be said, doing AR photos as an entire set. This, this is something I've been like hyped out and like all I've wanted. I've wanted AR photographers to get their pictures on cards. Like obviously like sign off all rights to Pokemon oh. makes sense, but because it's all through Pokemon go. So it's like, you couldn't have taken that picture without Pokemon go. So, you know, I just think, like that would be the best collaboration, but they'd probably just have, you know, photographers do it on the behalf of Pokemon Go. What if what if the TCG comes to go and there's like avatar items of like holding cards or uh Oh, you know I'd be rocking those the second that happens. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> or like, you know, some kind of like accessories or or something like that or or an item you know, oh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think there's a lot of possibilities here. I just think that with the way that the, the Pokemon Go online community, especially around some of the YouTubers that have gotten into the TCG, I just think that this could be a disaster at retail if these cards are going to be at retail. I don't know. I just like... I think with all the issues with with stock and buying cards and scalpers and all that shit that we're dealing with right now, that this just spells disaster when you look at it through that lens of like the scalper. So we'll have to remember, folks, don't pay high prices. They eventually will drop because they'll be like, oh, I'm sitting on all these cards. I I can't sell because we're seeing it happen now. So keep up. Keep fighting. What is it now that people are, are or have bought and can't get rid of? Is it Shining Fate? Oh, Ch- Champion's Path. Champion's Path. Because everybody, like most people are like, wow, that's a garbage set. Because there's literally just Hyper Rare Charizard and Shiny Charizard. And the rest of the cards are all worth like a dollar. Like any of the Vs <laughs> or anything like that. But, like You literally could go to tcgplayer.com right now and literally, I mean, follow the link in our website, please. Please, please, please. <laughs> and you could literally buy the whole set for probably like, an elite trainer box, the whole set, including the gold, really? um, suspicious food tin. You can get the hyper rares except for the Charizards. You yeah. can probably get it for 50 bucks. Honestly. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. This fucking market is bananas, dude. It's so nuts. It's so nuts. Oh, it's so weird. So freaking weird. But I, I don't know. I, I think that this could be uh, pretty exciting, but at the same time, it worries me if it's going to be at retail. So late no, May, I, I, we'll I, find I see out. a promotion. I see, I see a promotion now. Now that you're talking about it, I can, I can see GameStop giving it out, but I can also see them doing something within Go because then that allows every player that's playing Go to be a part of it and to like order something like to order it you know have like the the professor's bundle and it's like it's essentially the promo card that gets sent to your house and a bundle for the in-game app you know don't get me wrong dude that sounds amazing that would be so freaking cool you know what i mean that 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 would be like i don't know it would make go real you know what i mean like oh imagine like you get like a letter from the professor you know (laughs) oh my god that would be a little like Thanks for supporting supporting my research. Here's a card. Oh, uh, so cool. So cool. Niantic, draw- you can thank us later. <laughs> Discard your hand and draw seven. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Adam, you ready to uh, take a little breaky break? Let's take a breaky break. A break. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will uh, talk about the Pokemon Go Tour Kanto bonus event, the fallout that it's created, And we'll poke the bear. All right, we'll be back right after this.
and, and we're, we're back. back from our break. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I just want to say, as far as the champion's path goes that we were talking about just a second ago before we took the break, uh, I, I've been hanging out on uh, TCG yeah. Player. <laughs> Adam spent his time on break looking up the card prices. <laughs> And like the gold secret rare suspicious food tin is like four dollars. It's like the market price is two fifty four, but it's like at listings as low as two dollars. It's the secret crazy. rare, and like all the G, the V's and the V maxes are all like three dollars or under. Dude, I, I even the full art. Hot. I blame Logan Paul, dude. I blame Logan Paul. That's what happened. <laughs> Hyper rare peers six ninety nine. Hyper rare Kabu seven dollars. That is so cents. crazy. The, wow. the the Gardevoir is the highest price card right there at hyper rare at fifteen ninety five. Wow! But the Dreadnought is eight eight eighty two. Oh my God! All right, all right, Adam, I'm real. I'm reeling you in. Put sorry. Cl- close the tcgplayer.com, please. Close. <laughs> all right, everyone. A little housekeeping before we get into the back half of the show, the ass of the show, if you will. Uh, th- this podcast is powered by Patreon. Please check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor where you can support this show for as little as $1 a month. And that $1 will get you access to our patron exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. And I want to give a huge shout out to our show supporter tier patrons, Ace Trainers, Adrock, Alex, Andrew, Brian, Brittany, Chad, Carol, Chris, Cody, Eric, Garrett, GStacks87, Griggle788, Harry, Heracross, Boss, James, Jam, Michael, Joltswitz, Justin, Ken, Lady, Goobly, Meat, Lynchbot, Malachi, Mike, M. Pitts, Pokenab, Bot, Purple Pancakes, Ricky, Sam, Smeatwad, The Joker, The Noise, and Wood Woes Wolf. Thank you all so incredibly much. List is awesome. It's great. I, I love reading it. So thank you so much, everyone. A huge I shout- love I love hearing all the the edits because he has to stop himself every time and oh, edit it. Stop. In order- <laughs> no, it's You're awesome though. Breaking it's like- the magic. I okay. I'm sorry. Huge shout out to our gym leaders, absolutely Ryan, Dig Dug Rob, Jamal, JD Mojo, Jojo, Magikarp, DM, MD, Talentish, and T and Comics Wiz. And also a ton of love to our executive producer, Paul Bott. Thank y'all so incredibly much. Uh, but if Patreon isn't your thing, there's still a few other ways you could help us out. If you're listening on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. And if you're listening via a podcast service like Apple Podcasts, you can take a moment to leave us a review. All right, Adam, let's uh, get into a little bit of miscellaneous news here. Uh, this was an interesting one, and I'm not sure if you saw this. Niantic put up a tweet announcing a collaboration between Microsoft and HoloLens, uh, which shows John Hankey rocking a set of HoloLens, like wearing the HoloLens, and ultimately bringing up an AR menu, tossing a Pokeball on the ground, and Pikachu popping out. Um, and all, and then feeding a berry like yeah he does this like weird AR fucking looks like you know 1980 graphics <laughs> fucking AR pop up and you know selects a menu in, in AR tosses the Pikachu a, a berry you know it, it's it's very rough but very promising and then uh, Mr. Hankey gets up, walks off screen, and you see Veronica Sarin, who's the product marketing manager for Niantic. She's also from New Jersey, so fucking represent, um, who's also wearing a HoloLens, and she's standing there with an Eevee, and then ultimately, you know, in the script... Pikachu's walking back, or like, behind John yeah, Hankey. Yeah, it's it's very promising, because what, what Mr. Hankey is explaining here is that this is persistent, anchored community AR, meaning what he's seeing through the HoloLens in that location is the exact same thing that Veronica would be seeing through her HoloLens in that exact location. So it's sharing, you know, a visual link between the people, the GPS link, and the time link. So, you know, using 5G, I'd imagine, uh, 5G, you know, zero latency, pretty much. So you have no latency between the devices. You have exact GPS pinpoint location of where the asset is in the world and it's in real time. So think of Pokemon battles like that. It'd be fucking amazing. So very rough but very promising. I'll link to the link in the description to that tweet so you can check it out. Did did you see this Adam? You saw it obviously. Yeah, right? I saw it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So very fucking cool. Very, very cool. The HoloLens has been around for years. Um we've talked about it before on the show. 
Yeah, you want that cybernetic eyeball. I do want the cybernetic eyeball really bad. Like, hook me up. I actually, but, like, Googled it and then found, like, contact lenses, and I was like, man, I need <laughs> to get these and send one to Ken. But five years – actually, six years ago, 2015 E3, there was a Microsoft demo on stage – where they were wearing the HoloLens and playing Minecraft, and they brought up like this, they had like this table, and they fitted one of their cameras on stage with the HoloLens. So what the camera saw, you saw, was like looking through a HoloLens in AR. And it blew my fucking mind. Like, it was the coolest thing I ever saw, of just how the AR worked, and they were able to like zoom in and navigate and get all these different cool angles. Like, it was just amazing. So I've been a fan of this technology for a long time, and I just think that it lends itself so incredibly well to Pokemon uh, and Go, obviously. So very, very promising. Let us know what you think on that for sure. Uh, there Also, uh, Niantic has announced the India Wayfarer Challenge. This is to promote developing the in-game landscape in India, like to create more uh, Pokestops, waypoints, you know, whatever for all their games. Wayfinders who review Indian way spots, and they could do this via their home location or by changing their bonus location to India, can participate. And there's actual rewards. So this is running from March 16th through the 26th. If 3,000 new way spots are approved, Smeargle will be appearing more often. If 5,000 new way spots are approved, uh, receive a chance to get a shiny Murkrow. So I don't know if that's just going to be like everyone gets an encounter. I don't know how they'll do that. Uh, and then tier three, if 8,000 new way spots are approved, you'll get two times catch XP for Pokemon appearing as part of that event. So I don't know, Murkrow? <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea who else. But <laughs> it's just a bunch of Murkrow. They did this in Poland, and it was exceptionally successful. Tons of new stops were, were added. So uh, I know that. Okay, so how do I sign up? All right. Well, if you have Wayfarer, you know, to be to start actually doing this, you have to take the Wayfarer quiz online. Just Google Wayfarer. It'll walk you through the process. You log in with Google, whatever. Once you do that, you're allowed to set two locations, your home location and a bonus location. Bonus location you could change once per year. So you could ultimately set your bonus location to India. So that way, when you're looking at stuff to review, it's going to be giving you locations from India. So that's how you'd be able to take part. But just be aware that you can only change that bonus location once a year. So, you, you know, you'll be re reviewing, you know, Indian way spots for the next year, for the next year, <laughs> unless they, uh, you know, update it to allow. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm speaking out of turn here, but I, I'm pretty sure that you can't change it. It's like once per year. It is what it is. Because I remember people asking that when the Polish, event happened and it was like oh yeah well you can change your bonus location but you just can't change it for a year after but i i like this i i think this is cool this is a good way to just like you know put a defibrillator on uh an, on a region and just like you know clear boom and it's like fucking waste spots everywhere so i like it i think it's a great idea all right adam last topic of the day this is the pokemon go tour canto bonus event and yeah, this one caused a stir. So, back oh, on we're getting a bonus event. Oh, that means spawns, right? <laughs> we're gonna get some crazy Kanto spawns. I'm Only so if excited. you say Kanto with a soft A, like you do every time. Kanto, I fucking love that. But no, back Kanto. on the twentieth, we had the Kanto's event. <laughs> the Kanto's. <laughs> I can't say it with a straight face. We the had Kanto the, the, the Kanto event, right? Some posts started to pop up on Reddit that trainers that didn't buy a ticket were able to access the event. They turned their game on and said, pick a, you know, pick red or green. They would pick red and boom, they get the medal and they're off to the races. They're in the event. And apparently this happened for like the first six hours that the event was live. Now, I didn't think anything of it because it wasn't happening in the Americas because this was happening like when the things first started rolling out New Zealand area, that whole thing. Niantic did address it shortly after they patched it, of course, but they addressed it and said that due to this happening, they would be holding a bonus event to make up for trainers that actually did pay. So that's all they really said. They like went completely radio silent after that until yesterday when we got a blog post that included the details of the event. And to be honest, 
It doesn't seem like an event to me at all because it's not really an event. It's a month long timed research. And the timed research is paying out premium items like one incubator, one start. Wait, so no encounters? It makes no mention of spawns, no mentions of research encounters, just goodies. This could change. This can, you know, they could change this based on feedback. Maybe the encounters are there. They just didn't mention them. I don't know why they wouldn't do that. But very, very strange. So no mention of spawns. And that's kind of where people were like, what the fuck? And now many, myself included, kind of figured that this would be a makeup event, not necessarily just like this bonus research. And to be fair, they did say it was a bonus event, not a makeup event. That being said, they still said event. Special research or timed research isn't. So we're going to get some ex- some like new raids. <laughs> no, Adam, we're getting timed research. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's, now I'm so confused. No, but look now, what this event, if you want to call it that, what this thing this timed research is doing is trying to add value to those people that bought a ticket because they have felt a little slighted that they paid for the ticket. And these other people who didn't pay that pay for the ticket were able to have the same exact experience. So to add value to the people that did pay, they're saying, here's some bonus shit. Here you go. But, it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel like an event. But what about the people that did get the ticket, but they didn't pay for it? Did they get access to this event? Because technically, no, they no, they don't. Their... Okay, no, they'll still be able to finish. Like they do say that they'll still be able to finish like the special research and the masterwork research. So they'll they got the full ride for free, but they're wow. not going to be able to do the makeup. But. The, I, I'm 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 almost a hundred percent certain that the give word, us a second shiny ditto. The word event <laughs> in the title of this bonus event is what got people so fucking tilted because the spawns are typically what defines an event. Like otherwise, it's just like an isolated thing. It's just an isolated timed research. It's not an event. If they were doing an event around it, there would be spawns, eggs, raids, whatever. This doesn't have any of that, or at least not yet. (laughs) People were so pissed that this is what we ultimately did our poke the bear on this week. So, but getting back to the timed research, it runs from March 5th to April 5th. Now, does that mean it's going to be a long ass tasks? Like, are there going to be a million tasks where it's like a collection challenge thing? Like, you know, catch 200 Pokemon or whatever. Who knows? But we have all month. I don't know what that means, but this is, (laughs) these are the rewards. 30 Ultra Balls, a Lure Module, a Poffin, a Super Incubator, a Lucky Egg, three Silver Pineapp Berries. All right, it sounds good. Three Silver Pineapps, I'm in. Uh, that, that's, sarca- <laughs> that's, sarca- that's totally sarcasm. Uh, a Star Piece, an Elite Fast TM, Elite Charge TM, a Regular Charge TM, Regular Fast TM, and 100 Mew Candy. A free bundle containing three remote ray passes will also be available in the in-game shop. All right, so we're getting okay, a bunch can of... can I chime in? Absolutely. I can't wait to hear what you got to say about this. Okay. So if I was running down the list, I'd say 30 Ultra Balls, useless. A lure <laughs> module. Okay, I could use that. A Poffin, useless. A Super Incubator, okay, I could use that. A lucky egg, useless. Three silver pineapple berries, useless. A star piece, I could use that. Elite fast TM, useless. An elite charge TM, useless. A charge TM, also extra useless. A fast TM, also extra useless. A hundred mu candy, can I have some XL candy? Like, I I don't how know is, if the mu candy. How are elite fast and charge TMs useless? <laughs> it's sh- <laughs> I already have some, so like, why do I need more if I'm not even using the ones I have? I guess you're right. I have a couple. You of and each me both two. have like hundreds of charged <laughs> and fast TMs. Okay, so giving us a fast TM, a char- that, like those two are slaps in the face. 
the silver pineapps slap in the face, <laughs> lucky egg slap in the face, a poffin slap in the face, thirty ultra balls. Also, that's a slap in the ultra balls. Let me tell you. And then okay. the free raid passes. Like I know that they're giving them to us and they're letting us know they were going to do that anyways. <laughs> We've been right. we've been we've been given them like once every couple of weeks. So like okay. I it, like that's all right. <laughs> so so how much how much right. would you pay for one lure module, <laughs> one super incubator, and one star piece? You wouldn't you wouldn't be buying one a piece. But I'm if just you did, saying eighty coins each. Okay. No, a hundred isn't isn't a lure module. Well, whatever 100? it is, whatever 200? it is, I don't know. I don't Fuck. I don't like the rewards. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's back personally. Let's, no, personally. Look, me neither. They like you would think it would be three luck, you know, three lucky eggs, three star pieces, but who who this is all extra bonus free shit, so it is what it is. I'm happy. I'm holding on tight to my one now, XL rare candy. If they were just like, <laughs> "Hey, here's five XL rare candy." That's more useful. Then then all, this, all the stuff combined. All right, well, well, <laughs> a lot of it. Yes. Now, no, now, it being said that you didn't pay for your ticket, if you did, would you feel slighted that people yes. got this for free? You would like that bothered you? Uh, well, okay. So I, I mean, I didn't know about it until like the whole internet like started like freaking out, which is understandably so. Like you, you have all that right to, like that would be upsetting. Imagine like your all your friends are just like, yeah, I didn't buy it. But so they got it. Now th- it's a glitch. He, here's the interesting thing for me. So I don't know anyone that got in for free because a lot of these people for, were from the other side of the world. But what was happening was it went viral during the beginning of the event, and Niantic didn't patch it for hours. So like entire Discord communities, like we were just talking to. Lachlan from you know Australia on our Zoom, and he was saying like, yeah, dude, it was going viral. It was just running through discords, so it was like it would hit the Discord, and then people would just fucking log in. People were creating like dupe accounts, like alt accounts, just so they could get in, get another fucking shiny ditto. You know what I mean? Like, see, we deserve a second shiny ditto. Oh man, I don't think we deserve a fucking goddamn thing. I think all this shit is just bonus. It's awesome. But I didn't. Even if I dish, yeah. dished out the twelve tell, tell bucks, that I mean, ev- everyone can so excited for these these silver pineapple berries. Well, look, look, yeah, no sarcasm. Know, and, and people even will be he like said sarcasm. No, look, people will be like, look, you got the fucking ticket for free. You should shut your fucking mouth. Yeah, I got the ticket for free. I still spent a hundred bucks that day on in game shit. You know what I mean? So it's like, it all it all balances out. But it, it's, I didn't feel slighted by this. Some people were really pissed. And then the fact that they weren't getting spawns, like no one said anything as to what this was going to be. They just said a bonus event. And then they came out of the woodwork yesterday and gave the details. So we set up ourselves to fail when we have this expectation of a makeup event where it's going to be the same thing. Like I'm expecting another Canto tour. No, this is a bonus event. Now I'm I'm with you. Listen, if 100%. they just gave us like Paris and Sparrow spawns, I'd be happy with that. Well, they shouldn't have called it an, an event. That's the I think that's the issue. If they would have just said bonus timed research, it would have solved all these problems. Yes, a hundred percent. I agree. I agree. Because then it, it's no indication of like. Anything else besides the timed research doesn't tell you about the rewards, doesn't tell you if they're going to have, you know, research encounters away from that. It's just like you get timed research. They've done that in the past with like the safari, our city spotlights. Hey, if you the city spotlight that does the most will get uh, some special research or whatever, you know, like just say it like that. I think that would say have solved, it like you mean it. No, I think that would have saved a lot of fucking grief for Niantic because, uh, yeah, the internet is fucking lit right now, and like people are just pissed. They just—it's it, very interesting so, to the point where I, I did a poke the bear, and uh, I think it's you know I, I I think we can we can kind of get into it. But Adam, you ready to poke this? Yeah, let, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So on the poke the bear tweet, I put up a uh, topic makeup events. And I said, how do you feel about the increased number of makeup events? Are you disappointed by the Canto tour makeup? Now, I called it a makeup here. I probably shouldn't have done that. I should have said Canto tour 
bonus event. Um, is yeah, it not, get your words right. Come I on. know. Listen, I, I retweeted it and, <laughs> and fixed it. I said, it's not what you, is it not what you expected? Do you even feel the need to have one air it out and join the discussion? So we got a lot of good feedback here um, as we normally do. So thank you to everyone that wrote in. And this is what we got. Uh, Augmented Naturally Podcast, always the voice of reason, says the fact this makeup event is for the paid portion, not for other aspects of the event. This is good. Some people were able to get it for free, which invalidates our payment of it. The flexible time frame is great for people who might have plans, too. As we do not know if these are the only rewards from the makeup research, it could feature special Pokemon that people want to see again. So good point. Maybe there'll be additional announcements, but this is the thing. Fingers and toes crossed. Today's the third. It starts on the fifth. So they got to do this shit quick if they're going to do that. I don't know. I think they would have put it all together. Uh, Terry Wolf, it's all gravy. Let's just fucking play the game and have fun. (laughs) So good. Facts. Facts. So good. Uh, Magpie Malcolm, the event not having all Pokemon in the wild is disappointing enough. Regionals and raids only. Snorlax basically in raids. A spawn rate was low. Then to throw in a makeup event, but really it's just research, seems poor. Niantic be so out of touch with the player base right now. All right. A lot of people have that sentiment that Niantic just doesn't get it. Purified Podcast, Otakuzun, Pure Lighter. Lewis says, I'll get this one. Uh, the experience of the Kanto Tour was the spawns and the research for ticket holders. This just seems wrong for the reason that they are making us uh, to timed research to get the items. In my opinion, the items were a plus of the event, so this doesn't sit right with me. If we pay for what was the experience, we should be able to experience that once more for the makeup. Being raids, spawns, or even the music. We should be able to experience that once more for an event. The items were not the rewards of the event. All right, so this makes a lot of sense. Because what this is about is the experience of the event. And we talked about this with the Mr. Rhyme ticket. We said, oh, there's such value in all these items you're getting. It's like people don't give a shit about the items. And only like people like me are going to say, oh, well, if we add up everything, it's 1,400 Pokecoins worth of things. And you're only spending half the price of $7. Yeah, It's the experience of the event, the overall event. I do agree with that. Like thinking I about the that. music, like I personally didn't get the experience that everybody else got because I was working, which, you know, whatever, it's my own fault. But like, I would love to experience that music again. Yeah. Even if it was a toggle. Now, I, I get the whole thing of an event experience because without having the spawns and the research, it's not, the, the event isn't like encompassing. It's not like surrounding you. You're not... You're not in the event. So this this definitely doesn't does feel weird. All right. Uh, Pogo John says, I had no issues with the event. Seeing what this Kanto makeup event has to offer, though, to me, it's as it's it's nice as a bonus and I'm all for it. But those not being able to have complete the catch challenge because of it. Yeah, I could see it being a problem. It would have been nice if they had given us specific Kanto spawns and raids and maybe even some extra time to complete those catch challenges. Yeah, a lot of people got got burned on those catch challenges. They didn't finish. Yeah, I was down to I was down to the last like four no, yeah, five yeah, four or five hours to doing the trades. Yeah. It was yeah. bad. It was bad. Pope Dave writes in we shouldn't have these issues five years in. Next, if trainers want to spend money for items, they will. There is no way to spend money to create the type of spawns we saw during the Kanto event. I almost feel like this is some kind of mediocre settlement to a bad lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> well put, well put. Mitch writes in, Honestly, the items are cool. I'll gladly take a couple of elite charge and fast TMs, especially since they're a hot item and go, but there needs to be a makeup event with spawns as well. <sighs> I'm, I'm, you know, obviously we're seeing a trend, but I'll, I'll bite my tongue for now. Keep going. One's Chen, TL, trainer level 42. Uh, I'd rather more event spawns. I didn't have any issues, though. But does anyone want to make up research? Question mark? Like, eh, I don't know. Um, high likelihood of gym battles being a requirement. 
I'm still stuck on the gym battles for Jirachi due to the stay at home orders for my job and my personal responsibility. Touche. Yeah, Touche. You got to, you know, you got to remember that. And, and we're, you know, being here in the States, I mean, not that our situation is fucking great, but we can go outside if we want to. And uh, that's something that's very easily taken for granted when clearly there's, there's trainers around the world that don't have the same luxury that we do. Exactly. Zash writes in, like GoFest makeup event, I was expecting Spawn-related event as well. Being in Australia, we always feel like we're Niantic skinny pigs, but at least they used to do some justice after they messed up. But this is really ridiculous, and they're just handing out rewards. It sucks. Yo, Australia always gets fucked, man. And and not for nothing, New Zealand, I believe it was the first hour or two of the event, they couldn't connect. They actually had like mechanical issues with the game. So I think they said during GoFest they had like a 15-minute outage and they got a three-hour makeup. And for this event, they had over an hour outage and then they get timed research. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, 716 Hobgoblin Trainer level 50 writes in I try to separate the Twitter reaction And the reaction from players in my own Pokemon community Take Talking to the local players About a makeup event The reaction is positive The vast majority of locals love the event And are ex- actually excited about some free stuff And the chance of doing Another fun research The Twitter reaction is mostly led by the whiners who don't really play and just enjoy the chance of to poke a billion dollar company. Yeah, I I agree with this wholeheartedly. Uh, Twitter is its own shitstorm. So the vibe that's like if you want a reaction, Twitter's the place to go. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, not always representative of the community at the ground level. It's just the people on Twitter. So be very be very mindful of that. It's just that those people are very loud, even though they are few. Uh, I do want to give some, some interesting feedback here. Now, these comments that I'm going to read here are not necessarily from my Poke the Bear tweet. So I went out and pulled these, but I have some reactions from some creators about the makeup event. And I thought they were interesting enough to share. So... Trainer tips. This is what he said about it. He took Niantic support, re, you know, retweeted it about the 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 makeup event, and he says, "Still waiting on that event that was promised." So calling out Niantic support, like saying, "This isn't a fucking event. It's just fucking timed research." Reversal. Two words. Canto bonus event sucks ass. <laughs> I think that's a little bit more than two. That is the most. My math might be off. That is the most reversal ass post ever. And I fucking love it. It's so funny. So good. Like the fact that he actually wrote two words and then writes five additional words. It's fucking classic geo. So good. (laughs) Uh, And then one more. This one from Mystic Seven says Canto bonus event more disappointing than no wild shiny ditto. (laughs) So. The creators that have like large ass followings and big reach have been pretty vocal in, you know, showing off their descent for this this makeup event. And it's hard not to get caught up in it. But if you think of it for the intent of what they're saying with just trying to add value to the 12 bucks to those original ticket buyers, they want to just give you some extra value this does just that from a black and white perspective. You can't say, all right, here's a bunch more premium items and you're giving, we're giving them to you at no additional cost. Yes. That mechanically increases the value, but there is no experience. And I think that's the intangible difference here of why things just don't feel right at all. But Adam, what what are your kind of closing thoughts on this? I don't like a lot of the items. From some, for somebody that, like, everybody plays the game differently. So some players are like, wow, those elite, elite, fast, and charge TMs, sweet, can't wait. And the charge TMs stuff, like, I use them every day. Like, I have hundreds of charge TMs and fast TMs but, and elite TMs. So, like, so I don't for you, is it, use is them, it just about the them. items? Like, it doesn't, it's not necessarily yeah, about like, the spawns? Like, like I'd the rather a heavy... Spawns? I'd rather a heavy silver pineapple berry because that's that's something that we don't normally get. Like that's like a hard task to find. 
So those are in themselves are already rare. Like you can't just like buy those. So like 15 of those would sounds reasonable. That's reasonable. And like XL candy, that's something that people are desiring, you know, clearly people are vocal about it. They're, they're changing the whole system because of it. You know, they're, they're adding, you know, walking to get XL candy. So giving us like five X XL candy would be a benefit to everyone. Um, ultra balls. Like, I don't need those. Give me some, some more super incubators, regular incubators. I'm okay with getting like three of them. But what about the spawns? You know, like, like that doesn't bother you? The spawns, I, like honestly, just give us Snorlax, Spiro, and Paris. Just things that were like very low in spawn rate. You know, you could throw I, in Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee as I, well too. I bet you they couldn't but, do it because this is in the next season and all those Pokemon are like pulled out of the pool. Like, I don't know. I don't think they ever had an, any intention of putting spawns into this, even from the 20th, the day that they decided, oh, shit, we're going to have to do a, a bonus event. Because all... Man, bonus research. I know. If I was just going to say it again. If they just said bonus timed research, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. It really is tied to the word event. I think that's really what, what fucked them here. Mm. Very interesting topic. Thank you to everyone for writing in. Please, let's keep this conversation going. Check us out on Twitter at PokeProfNet. Link is in the description. But Adam, that's a show, man. That's a show. Yeah. That's definitely a show. We it was a good it. show. I was here for that show, and it happened. <laughs> you were, you were in fact, here. You were present, so thank you so much for that. But everyone, please uh, check out LuredUp.com for everything we have going on with the show, PokemonProfessor.com for everything that's going on with the network. Our merch store is live, PokemonProfessor.com slash merch. Connect with us on social media. Send us an email, info at luredup.com. You can uh, text, call, voicemail, picture, or video, 732-835-8639. And uh, Adam, if that's it, I believe that, in fact, would be it. Is that it? Question that mark. would be it. Keep training trainers. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week.